Hi, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Hyrus Makes podcast. Um, I'm Iris, the designer behind Hyrus Makes, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of my summer top designs. So if you've been following me for a while, you might have come across my summer tops knit along. Um, I ran this for the first time last year, uh, from like early spring through to June, and I've decided to do it again this year because um, it was a really fun kind of little knit along. And basically I want to just take you through a little bit about the knit along and all of my summer patterns. Of course you can knit the summer patterns anytime, it doesn't need to be part of the knit along. Um, but I just thought it would be a nice time to cover them. So, first of all, I want to show you some of my latest designs, um, which is a bralette and a little camisole. So, here we have the, what was originally called the halter-ish bralette because I couldn't think of the name of it, but it is now officially called the arrow bralette and it is out on my website on Ravelry and I also recently made an Etsy shop so you can get it there as well. So the arrow bralette is um, just classic little bralette um, and it has a sort of semi halter neck design so it comes up uh, kind of in a halter neck fashion but the straps well the straps you can do it however you like but I made one sample with cross back straps and one with plain straps but you can of course actually make it a halter as well if that's your kind of thing. Um, I always like the look of a halter neck but I don't like the feeling of it on your neck because it's really heavy. So this is kind of a way to get that look without actually having um, a halter neck. So in terms of pattern details I made both of my samples in Sanders Sunday um, which is a quite a light fingering or four ply yarn it's about 230 meters per 50 grams as far as I remember um, but it's non superwash it blooms quite nicely um, so you get quite a nice texture I don't know if that comes up there um, so the bra that is knit bottom up in two by two rib um, and then you make a series of decreases and increases to form this kind of arrow like um, design at the top and I will post kind of a picture of me wearing it here um, whilst I kind of chat about the rest of it because this is a particularly bralettes in general don't look good <laughs> when they're not on a body because the whole point is that it's knit with a lot of negative ease so that it really sits nice and tightly on the body and the one thing I did with this pattern which is a bit different to for example the eyelet bralette which we'll come to in a minute is that I graded this pattern not only for different um, underbust sizes, so kind of like your, your bra strap size, um, but also for different full bust sizes. So there are um, different sizes for the underbust and then for each of those there are three different full bust sizes. So small, medium and large, um, which is sort of meaningless, but you know, in the pattern it gives you what um, those sizes actually mean. So this means it has a really really wide range of sizes so hopefully hopefully fingers crossed you should be able to find your size in there somewhere so even if you think normally you know bralettes are not really for me because you know you have quite a large bust a full bust to under bust ratio um hopefully that will solve that problem for you um and i think it's kind of pattern um it looks simple it's simple to knit but there's, I've put quite a lot of information in the pattern about sizing. So as I said, there's all these different sizes, which can be maybe a bit overwhelming when you first look at the pattern. Um, but there's loads of details, exactly what each size means. And you might find that you could knit two or three different sizes actually to fit your body, depending on how you want the actual um, bralette to look in the end. If you'd like it to be really tight and supportive, you might knit slightly smaller size, um, than if you'd maybe want it a little bit looser and maybe you'll wear a bra underneath it. So um, definitely check that out. And of course, because it's just a little bralette knit in four ply, you need very little yarn. So this sample, the grain one here, is um, on the bust size 28 inch. 
Um, so I think that's C. Um, and it used like 55 grams, so just over one ball of the Sandy Sunday. And then I made one size bigger, which is for me, which was I think size D under bust. And then, <laughs> no surprise, a small full bust measurement for me. Um, and that used maybe 65 grams. So it's really like a great pattern if you've knit something else in similar yarn and you have like one ball left over from, from a sweater or something. Um, and you could totally make it striped or, you know, all sorts of things, make it a scrappy project. So yeah, really quick knit, really simple um, to knit. You just need to think a bit about the pattern um, sizing. So choosing your sizing carefully and swatching very carefully. Um, yeah, so that is the Arrow Bralette, which is out now. And then the next pattern I want to talk about um, is the Bedruton camisole. So this uh, came out, uh, I think I released this about a month ago, two months ago, and this is a, a camisole, sort of. I mean, I, I'm never really sure when it's a camisole, when it's a top, but I think camisole normally has thinner straps, you know, like little spaghetti straps, but this has slightly wider straps, so it will give you bra coverage. Um, so you can wear this with a bra, which is quite nice. And it's a drapey um, camisole, and I knit my sample in the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, um, but there are alternatives you can knit it in as well. It's particularly designed to be drapey, so I would avoid any wool blends and go for something like plant-based or silk to give that drape. Um, and I think a few people have mentioned this pattern in their uh, podcast videos or on Instagram or something, and they're like, bed, 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 bed. not sure what it's called, <laughs> and that's fine. So Bedruthen is a place in Cornwall, and there's a place there called the Bedruthen Steps. So there's like these little steps on the coast. It's really, it's really pretty. There's a really nice spa there. Um, <laughs> so basically, because of the little step scallop detail, on the neckline, which you can kind of see here, I thought the Bedruthen camisole would be a nice name for it. So that's what the name means. Um, so sorry for the people who are confused by it. Um, but yeah, it's a really lovely place in Cornwall. I'm actually going there again next week or the week after, so I'm really excited. And I would definitely be taking this camisole with me to take some pictures. Um, so yeah, that's what, what the name is. Um, and I went through this pattern in considerably more detail, I think, in my last video, so I will not spend too much time on it, but um, yeah, it's knit top down and you knit kind of the, the back two pieces, so there's a bit of like a, a shallow V sort of thing at the back as well, and then you knit the front two pieces, then you join in the round, and then at the bottom there's a split hem, which of course is optional, but um, I always think it's quite nice on a drapey top because then you don't get that kind of, especially if it's a bit longer, if it's not cropped, you don't get that thing where it kind of pulls over your bum. Um, so it gives you a nice bum space, which is important. Um, so yeah, that's a bedroom and camisole. This is also available on my website, Ravelry and Etsy. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And I, I really want to knit a second sample but um, it's on you know, three, three millimeter needles and it is in the Knitting for All of Pure Silk and it is in two by two rib. And once you draw in for the body, I'm not going to lie, it becomes a little bit tedious to knit all of this two by two rib. Um, I mean, it depends. It's a really good project for like being in the car or watching TV or something where you don't have to concentrate. So you will get through it. And I remember a lot of my testers, they flew through the top part, got to joining and like, oh, oh no, there's so much two by two rib. Um, and they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish. Um, and then suddenly a week later, oh, I finished. So I think once you get going with like a nice, super mindful, super simple pattern, you actually, sometimes you need that. You just need something you just knit and you don't have to think about. So while you do have to think about the top part, the shaping a bit, once you get to the, in the round two by two rib, you're just flying through it. Um, so yeah, maybe a good one to take with you on your holiday as well. Um, 
for like knitting whilst you're traveling that sort of thing so yeah that is the bed and camisole and then i have a well sure i should actually show you my stack of uh, knits so this is what we're going to go through um so i'll try to be brief but i can go on so we'll see but this is most of my summer designs um and at the bottom here there is a new one which I only just finished. I'm not sure if it'll be out this year or not, um, but we'll see if we can get to that at the end. So I'm gonna just do a whistle stop tour of the other designs, most of which came out last year or the year before. I think mainly actually the year before. Um, so I mentioned already the Eyelet Bralette, which is my other sort of bralette design. Um, and that is this one. Um, so this is, again, knit in a full ply yarn. The Sand is Sunday would be great. Um, anything with a bit of wool in it to give it that elasticity. Um, because again, it's knit with negative ease, so you want it to be a little bit stretched um, so it fits nicely. But to be honest, you probably could size up a little bit and knit it almost more like a camisole in a different kind of yarn. But the back does have does have a kind of straight cast off so I'm not sure if that would sit very nicely in a more drapey yarn um, so I would probably stick to the kind of wool blends that are mentioned in the pattern any sort of sock yarn what's great about this is it uses normal most sizes less than 100 grams depending how long you make it so it's perfect for those um, balls of yarn that you've been stashing for the last like six years because they're so nice and they're hand dyed you don't know what to use them for this is perfect for that because it's got quite a lot of stock in it it lets the yarn shine so you actually see the colorways in the yarn i mean maybe my example isn't great because it's just green but um i've seen lots of um, people on ravelry and test knitters etc make it in really nice hand dyed yarn and i keep meaning to um make another one for myself in all of my hand-dyed yarn that has been stashed for too long. So um, this is knit bottom up in the round um, and it has this simple but quite effective little eyelet detail running down the centre and then you have the two triangles at the top. So I would say it's pretty beginner friendly as long as you're willing to look up a couple of basic little stitches um, and the good thing is because it's knit bottom up, you start with a one by one rib, you can get in the hang of it, you know, and then you knit this eyelet bit, which as soon as you've got the hang of that, it, you fly through that. And then you, the most complicated bit is the shaping. So, but by the time you've got to that, you've had quite a lot of knitting experience already. So pretty good if you are starting out, um, and you don't want to invest too much yarn in like sweater quantity or you know, mohair, these sort of things, you can just buy yourself one or two balls, maybe it's a 50 gram, 100 gram ball of yarn, a few pounds, a few dollars, and you can make this. And if it doesn't turn out perfect, then you at least you haven't invested a hundred pounds in some really fancy yarn and knit for ages to make a sweater that you then don't like. Um, so yeah, and if it ends up a bit too big or a bit too small, it's a perfect thing to just gift to someone else as well because it's so basic um and I actually had a chat with a few people recently like oh we'll not try to wear that out blah 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 it's a bit too revealing um I actually wear the bralettes quite a lot just around the house like with my pajamas like a loungewear sort of thing um and I feel like that's totally fine or as a base layer um why can't we knit nice things to like wear underneath or to just to keep us warm so you know, even if you think, oh, I'm not sure I'd actually just wear that as a top out, um, you know, don't feel guilty to knit yourself something to just wear around the house, especially if you work from home. You're there quite a lot. So, you know, anyway, that's the Islet Bralette. This is also available website, Ravelry and Etsy. OK, so I think we'll stick maybe with these kind of bralette type things um so i was saying the eyelet bra that is good for beginners um if you are really a beginner as in you've never knit any garment before maybe you've knit a scarf um 
maybe you haven't even knit in the round before, then this is a great pattern for you. This is as basic as it gets. This is the stash busting tube top. And this is a free pattern you can find on my website in a blog post. And it is also graded for different sizes. So um, there should be a size there for you. So basically, this is just a tube knit in the round um, at a fairly large gauge as well. So it's two strands of um, four ply or finger and yarn held together, which I use two different colors here to create this kind of mild effect. But you know, you can use any sort of yarn. This is kind of the idea of it that is just stash bossed. Um, you could also use um, an Aran weight or heavier yarn if you can reach the gauge with a single strand. Um, or you could do it with a mohair. I'm not sure that would be super pleasant to wear, but you could do that. Um, so yeah, this is a really good place to start if you're an absolute beginner and you don't want to spend any money on a pattern because it's free. Um, and you can also take part in the summer tops knit along by knitting the free pattern as well. So that's a free way to take part. So that's that one. Um, <clears throat> and then, well, we'll stick with kind of the lighter weight patterns at first. Um, so I think two years ago, I released two patterns um, called the strawberry top and the strawberry top light. So that's these two. Um, the strawberry top came first and you can see how it ended up with the name strawberry top because I made my sample in pink and one of my friends was like, oh, it looks like a strawberry. Yeah, <laughs> so that's how it got its name, Strawberry Top. So the original Strawberry Top is in a double knit cotton. For this, I used the We Are Knitters, the cotton, but there's loads of double knit cotton yarns available. They're really good value um, and they knit up really, really quickly. You can, most of them you can throw in the washing machine, which is always good for a summer top. And yeah, you can normally get loads of really good colors as well. So this is pretty simple pattern. Um, it is knit top down, which is quite nice for a top like this because you just keep going until you run out of yarn or until you like the length of it. I think especially with sort of drapey tops, knitting them bottom up can be really hard because you're not sure, you know, exactly how it's gonna fit. And sometimes a drapey top, if it's too cropped, it can look a bit weird. If it's too long, you get that thing where it's like, stretches over your bum, for example. So I really like knitting top down uh, because I can just try it on and see how it looks and then decide how long to make it. So yeah, that is the strawberry top, um, the original. And I would say difficulty, it's more difficult probably than the eyelet bralette. It's not inherently too difficult, but you do need to kind of be able to count where you are stitch wise in order to get the eyelets in there properly. This is one of my earlier patterns. Um, and I think, you know, most people manage to place the eyelets just fine, but it is a little bit tricky. Um, if I have time at some point, I might go back and try to make it a little bit more beginner friendly than it is and give more specific details about setting up the new rows of eyelets for each size. Um, it's just something I haven't got around to just yet, but if you're having trouble with it, just drop me a message. I'm happy to help um, by email if you can, because uh, Instagram messages, YouTube comments, etc., even Ravelry messages, I just miss them. And then I feel really bad when like two months later, I'm like, oh my God, I never replied. So send me an email. And if I don't reply in like a week, send me another email. I really don't mind. Um, I need to be bugged. Um, and I'm not ignoring you. I just, I'm, you know, all over the shop sometimes. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you have trouble with setting up the eyelet rows, just let me know. But also if you are thinking of joining the knit along, this is a really good time to tackle a pattern that is maybe a little bit more advanced than you, you maybe think your skill level is currently at, or you want to take your, your knitting to the next level. For example, you want to try something a bit harder. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, I set up these Instagram groups 
So um, it's, op it's optional, you don't have to join the Instagram chats. But I add you to an Instagram chat and then, you know, you can post your question in there as well. Look, I'm having trouble with this thing or I don't quite understand what that is. And instead of waiting for a week for me to reply and having to bug me, <laughs> um, you know, someone else who is more experienced or who's knit this pattern before can just say, oh yeah, um, it's like this. And then there you go, you've got your answer. And you get that little like community feel. And I think it's, it's a really nice way to tackle a slightly more complex pattern um, with some support. You can also consider going to like your local yarn shop most of them have um, like knitting evenings as well. And you just take your project along and say, oh, help me. And in my experience, they are very, very happy to help you. Um, but of course, you're always welcome to reach out to me as well if you want um, detailed pattern support as well. But yeah, so that is the strawberry top, the double knit weight. Um, and then I also, just after releasing that, I thought, oh, you know what? It's it's quite heavy in the in the double knit, and I quite like to have properly lightweight summer tops. Um, they take a lot longer to knit. This is definitely true because they're always on like a three millimeter needle. There's a lot of stitches, um, and yeah, I mean they're time consuming. So. You know, the double knit, especially this, is quite open and like drapey, so it's it's not hot to wear. Um, but I just really like those lightweight fabrics. So I thought, you know what, this would be really nice in a lighter weight. So then I made this, which is the strawberry top light. And again, it has the little eyelets, um, but they're obviously placed slightly differently, the gauge is different, etc. So um, similar look, but much more drapey. So this sample I knit in um, the We Are Knitted Bamboo, I think it's called. Anyway, it's like a tensile viscose um, thing. So it's very shiny and very, very, very drapey. I mean, I, think, I don't know if you can tell here. Anyway, um, which, is not necessarily the most pleasant knitting experience because it's so slippery um, and so thin and has no stretch whatsoever. So knitting experience wise, maybe not the most pleasant, but the fabric you get is quite like, I mean, it's very um, breathable, right? I, and very soft and shiny. And I think often it's the kind of thing people are quite surprised that it's knitted, right? It's not the kind of fabric you'd expect from knitting um, and so yeah that's the the lighter version if you also like to have your summer tops very lightweight um, what I would say in terms of the fit of these uh, is that the patterns recommend kind of a range of different eases but I would have a look at some of the some like the projects on Ravelry if you're in the Instagram groups for the knit along. You can also ask there, look at the tester pictures to decide if you want it to be tight fitting or if you want it to be really drapey. So the reason I stress kind of thinking about this a little bit is that you see at the top here, especially in the light version, you get this kind of scoop neck effect and it can kind of drape down almost like a sort of cowl neck thing. But actually this is cast on straight. There's no shaping there. It's just the weight of the yarn itself that's causing that um, kind of drooping, which sounds terrible, but in a good way, draping. <laughs> um, so if you want that look, so this sample, if you see it worn, I, I have it pictures of it on various social media, on the listings, etc., of me wearing it or of my friend wearing it, um, who is probably one size bigger than me. And you can see how different it looks, but it's the same sample. So on me, it's got a bit of positive ease, so it's kind of a um, drapey look. Whereas if you wear it with negative ease, you've got more the, like the eyelets are more kind of opened up um, and it's a tighter fit. So just consider that when you're knitting um, or when you're choosing a size as to how you want the final thing to look. The good thing is you can also knit multiple and kind of have quite different looking tops. Okay, 
Um, I've probably been waffling on already, but we're almost there. Um, so another double knit weight top is this seashell top, which I should probably block again, actually. Um, this is actually knit bottom up. Um, and you cast on and you immediately start working this all over lace pattern, which gives you this scalloped edge at the bottom. Um, and let me try and hold it open. So it's quite open. You have quite a lot of little eyelets, um, but it's a very simple lace pattern. So if you're not very experienced with lace, this is a pretty good one to start with. Um, as you know, it's quite easy to memorize the repeats and it's on a double knit weight. So you can kind of see what you're doing a bit more easily than on a lighter weight project. It is, um, so my sample is made in a cotton wool blend. It's like 50, 50, which is really nice because you get the sort of drape and the, the breathability of the cotton. Um, but it's a bit more pleasant to knit with because of the wool. And then you have a little bit of stretch as well. So again, with this one, you could knit it with sort of negative ease or very little ease if you want a more tight fitting thing. Um, or you could knit it possibly just in a pure cotton, for example, and have a more um, drapey look in the final thing. So yeah, that's the seashell top. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so that brings me to almost the end of that stack. Um, the last one I want to mention before we move on to kind of a new design is what I'm wearing, which um, is the Sundell top. So hopefully you can see that here. Um, I will post a picture as well. And the Sundell top is an actual top, so it has sleeves. <laughs> um, and it's knit in the round from the top down. There's short row shaping. And then you split for the sleeves. It's a classic circular yoke. Um, but the difference is that you have these kind of sections, um, which is where the Sundial name comes from. And again, it's knit in Sunday Sunday, which I actually find is a really great summer yarn, even though it's wool. Um, it has a really nice stretch. It's really breathable. It blooms nicely. Um, and it feels nice and next to the skin. It's not like super soft. Um, but it's got, I don't know how to describe it, like a nice scratchiness. That doesn't sound right. You know, like a nice rippiness. So it keeps the stitch definition really nicely as well. Um, so that's why I quite like it for things like the ribbing and this sundial because you can really see the details. Um, so yeah, this is sundial top. There is also a sundial sweater, um, which is similar. And yeah, this one, Obviously it takes a little bit longer to knit, but not too bad really, um, because it's all knit in the round and there is a lot of stockinette, so quite a lot of knit, not too much purling. Depending on which part of the world you live in and whether your summers are actually warm or cold, <laughs> or like in the UK, can be anything. Um, this is either a summer top or a spring top or an autumn top, um, but I find it it's been really good this spring because we've had quite a cold spring um, and you kind of feel a bit cozy, um, but it's still breathable. And yeah, it's kind of one of my favourite ones to actually wear as well. And I know not everyone wants like a really strappy um, top with their shoulders out and everything. So this is a good alternative because it's an actual top. Um, it's got a very high neck. I really like high neck tops. Um, so also jumpers, you will find that most of my sweater and jumper patterns, top patterns are quite high necked. Um, I don't know, I just, it's, I like that or strappy <laughs> with the whole neck out, I don't know. Maybe someday I will design more of a scoopy neck um, pattern. But you can, if you're quite an experienced knitter, you can kind of hack a wider neck by just casting on like the neck size up and then just continuing the circular yoke to the final stitch count of your actual size. So you cast on one size bigger, where it's a little, you'll cast on kind of like here instead of there, um, and then you'll end up with a slightly wider yoke. If that makes sense, if it makes sense to you, then you are probably able to figure it out. If not, then um, 
you can <laughs> wait until I maybe release something with a wider neck at some point. Okay, so that's sort of it for now. I do have one other pattern, um, one or two other summer top patterns, which I haven't gone through now, mainly because I've given the samples away and I'm in the process of knitting new ones. Um, mainly, a quite popular design of mine is the Helix crop top. You probably haven't seen it very often on my Instagram because I released it a few years ago. I gave away the sample. Um, and so I haven't taken any new pictures lately. So this year in the summer top knit along, I'm actually trying to knit a new version of that. Um, sorry about this. So this is where I'm at so far, the Helix crop top. Um, and it's basically, again, it's knit bottom up. It's kind of a bralette top situation, depending on how long you make it. Um, and I am making a kind of a variegated, version using a um, really, really lovely yarn from Forest Lane Fiberco over in the US. So I will link to her page as well. because She's got some really lovely colorways and it's all non super wash and kind of local to her. I suppose not local to me, but you know, really lovely um, yarn. So hopefully that will be done at some point soon. Okay. So that's it on patterns that you can actually get your hands on right now. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been quite, I don't know, stressed in various ways, a lot to do with knitting as such. Um, we're not gonna go into all of that right now. Maybe that's for another, another episode, but I needed something that was just easy on bigger needles, I didn't really have to think and just just make it, you know, just get something done. Um, and so I came up with this, which is a sort of summer slipover top vest thing. Um, I'm not quite sure, I don't think I would wear it on top of something else as a slipover, so in a sense that means it's a top, but you could, but it's kind of the shape of a slipover, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I, the armholes are not too deep because on some slipovers the armholes are really, really deep on some uh, slipover designs I've seen, which means if you were to wear it as a top, you just see your entire bra, which is a bit weird. Or you wear no bra, but then like it's so deep that, I don't know, something could go wrong. Um, so yeah, this is like that, but the armhole depth is not quite as deep. Um, just because I think it's just not really very practical. So, um, yes, it doesn't have a name yet. Um, I'm not sure if I will release it this summer. Maybe, maybe because it's a bit more possibly of an autumnal transitional piece because it's um, thicker. So I knit this with two strands held together of the Hobby Viscose Rainbow Bamboo something. I'll put a link. Um, it's a tensile blend, so a bit similar to the Strawberry Top Light, but it's a bit less shiny and a bit of a thicker yarn. So two strands of this held together, I knit on a 5.5 millimeter needle. Um, so it's quite chunky. Um, and I used a similar kind of uh, broken rib detailing to the Strata sweater. Um, so it kind of starts up here and then it joins together in the underarm and then it um, transitions into this split hem at the bottom. Um, and then I've kind of mirrored that design as well on the neckline. So pretty simple to knit, um, easy to wear hopefully. I have to say that like this, this yarn, I've had it for a while. Um, I wasn't really sure what to do with it. I was thinking maybe I'd de-stash it, but actually the final thing, I do quite like the feeling of it. It is heavy. So that's why I don't think I'd wear it over something, but it would be quite nice to wear, I think on a cooler day, um, kind of autumn, late summer. So yeah, I haven't worn it a lot yet. I don't know how it's going to behave, etc. So keep your eyes peeled for this one. Um, and also, yeah, let me know in the, 
comment if you think this is something you'd actually like to see as a pattern. Um, but yeah, it was just a bit of a palette cleanser for me. Just needed that for some reason. Sometimes you do. Um, but I am hoping to do a kind of design inspired by this and the Strata sweater, another sweater design. Cryptic, yes, because it's not quite organised yet. But hopefully that will be out this year. Um, so yeah, that's it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed the, I would say, whistle-stop tour of the summer patterns, but I don't know if it was whistle-stop tour. I think it's probably quite a long tour. Um, but yeah, hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea of all the different summer patterns. And I'd really love to have you join the Summer Tops Knit Along. Um, I'll probably do it again next year, but you never know. So definitely join this year if you are thinking of knitting any of the summer tops. So I should probably quickly give all the details on it. So essentially there's a, a blog post on my website with all the information. And at the bottom of there, there's a, like a link to a Google form where you sign up for the knit along. Um, and basically you can knit any of my summer top patterns all the details are listed there, exactly which patterns, including the stash boss and tube top, which is free. And essentially there are a few discounts for um, various yarns as well, if you sign up. And you can be added to Instagram chats or not, if it's not your thing. You can also join the Zoom um, knit alongs, which I will be hosting fairly shortly. And there'll be an email going out about that next week. So make sure you sign up quickly so that you can join the Zoom as well. And so why would you do this? So <laughs> other than the fact that you want to knit summer top, um, at the end of the knit along, which will be the end of July, I'll send around another form where called the completion form where you can fill in what you've completed, take a little snap, doesn't need to be perfect. Take a little snap of your um, design, don't not design, take a little snap of your knit and upload it to the form. And once you've done that, I will be sending out a 25% discount code for all of my patterns. So this, you'll be able to use this on all the platforms, website, Ravelry and Etsy, and you can use it once, but you can use it on as many patterns as you like. So you can buy one pattern, get 25% off. You can buy 20 patterns and get them all 25% off. Um, and that's just as a way to give everyone something back for joining the knit along because normally knit alongs will have kind of a prize draw at the end. There will be hopefully also some prize draws as well. But normally there's a prize draw. So, you know, if you've, you've, knit, you've done the knit along, you've, you've made your whatever sweater top, whatever the knit along is, but then you have like a one in something chance of winning the prize. So I thought it would be nice that everyone gets something at the end of it, if you finish something. So yeah, and this is a good way to stock up on patterns for autumn and winter. Um, so yeah, that'd be good. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, hopefully not too much rambling. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not a bit out of practice on the, YouTube videos. Um, yeah, but let me know in the comments as well what you would like to see in these videos. Um, I've been doing quite a lot like pattern discussion, um, but is there anything else you'd like to hear about? Um, thoughts, kind of just chat about what goes on in my life other than pattern designing. Yeah, let me know, let me know what you think anything in this video that's distracting, that would help you. Um, just some feedback, preferably nice feedback, other than like, it can be constructive, <laughs> but not like mean. Anyway, I'm sure you won't be mean. Cool. So see you next time. And thank you so much for joining. <laughs>